This video is a continuation of documenting a project I did recently where I'm showing real-time accelerometer and gyroscope data uh, from a Raspberry Pi to a website. Uh, the bulk of the setting up and configuration uh, I've already covered on a blog post on Dirty Optics. Uh, that goes through setting up the Raspberry Pi as a Wi-Fi access point uh, and the Python scripts to actually collect the data and write that data into a JSON file. So that JSON file is where we store the up-to-date information and that looks something like this. So this is actually generated from a PHP script, not from the accelerometer or the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm just running this example locally because uh, it makes troubleshooting, design, as well as documentation and videos a lot easier. But all it does is return some, some random data for these key value pairs. The actual final page looks like this. So if we refresh the page, you can see it populates each of these six charts in real time with data. Uh, they're pulling about 20 milliseconds. You can see they've actually got values on the left with timestamps on the x-axis. The code itself uh, is just under 300 lines and the HTML element of it is even smaller. It's only about 50 lines. Most of this is setting up the structure of the page. All of the data um, and configuration is done in JavaScript. Um, so you can see all I'm doing here is a few headings uh, after I've loaded in the jQuery and the chart.js libraries. Uh, so a few labels and then two sets of these div containers. One's for accelerometer, one's for the uh, orientation, so the, the gyroscope heading information. Uh, and each of those then has an X, Y, and Z component, which is roll, pitch, and your for heading. Uh, and inside each of these divs, there is a canvas. And that canvas is the actual part where the chart is drawn. Uh, so these are HTML5 elements. They're really nice, really powerful and flexible uh, for drawing graphical things in the browser. As for the aesthetics of these, uh, that's handled by even less in the way of CSS. It's quite simple. Uh, the main thing I'm using here are flex spaces to make everything snap and align nice and simply. Uh, flex spaces. For someone who's not a web designer, I love flex spaces. They make things nice and easy to align and sort of set size and shape priorities. Uh, they're very, very flexible, very, very powerful for that. And aside from that, all I'm sending is in background information. Again, all of the chat elements are all done through JavaScript. So the JavaScript itself, which I've got at the head of my file, uh, in an ideal world this should probably be separate files, but this was just easier for me at the time. Uh, when the page is loaded, uh, we console log, so write to the console that it's loaded, and there's a few configuration variables that I've set already. Uh, the first of these is how often I update the chart, so how often I do that AJAX call to get the latest JSON data. The second is how many pieces of data I keep. Uh, in this instance, it's 200. You could have zero. You could have all your data. You could never delete anything. Um, the other beauty of this is you can actually use uh, other JavaScript and jQuery elements to capture button presses of uh, or link clicks so you can actually clear charts whenever you wanted to. You can just hit clear different charts to see different things or to overlay uh, different data sets on top of each other in the same chart. Um, that's a very powerful way to sort of be able to selectively view and change your charts in real time. Uh, very, very flexible, very, very powerful. I'm a very big fan of chart.js. A lot of these things are covered in the API documentation. Uh, the next sort of settings we have is just a counter and then we have each of the actual chart elements themselves. The way we grab these, so these are just 
jQuery, they just grab those chart objects by their ID. So you can see each of their IDs. I said a few common options. Again, this is all about the aesthetic elements and sort of the structure. So you can see the x axis is time, this is the timestamp format, y axis begins at zero, legends, tables, tooltips, all those different things can all be set here. And by having one group of common options, I don't have to define them for every chart. I can just use functions that combine them together correctly. Uh, I will say now, I apologize if I use the incorrect terminology for JavaScript. Uh, I'm only sort of a, a bit of a JavaScript fan. I'm not, I won't get quite the correct nomenclature. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're following along. Uh, so here we have the actual objects themselves. So we create the XX along with a chart here by creating a new chart again using that reference there, X Excel chart. We set the, the type to line as opposed to bar or pie chart. Uh, I believe there's a few others like radar charts that supports as well. Set labels, graphic information. Here we actually do that combination with our common options and a few uh, chart specific elements for the X acceleration axis, namely the label acceleration X. So we do this again for every chart element we have, which will finally the actual functions to handle the real time element of this, which is a really, in my opinion, cool part. Uh, this is the function add data. I'll get to that one in a second. The main one we are interested in to begin with is this update data function. This is called, this is the first function that's called after all those variables we've set up. And in here, we actually do console.log update data. Again, just for debugging purposes. The main magic happens here with this JSON, so this Ajax call, which is a jQuery function for your actual JSON data. Now in this instance, I'm using my accelerometer generator PHP script, but this would actually be a JSON file that we're making with Python. Then with that data, we pass that to the add data function. We check that that data actually exists. Uh, there is a very real risk in the way that this code is written that you can actually be writing data actively to that JSON file in the Python script. And the Apache web server running on the Raspberry Pi actually can't return anything. It doesn't return a result. It will return null. Uh, if you wanted to make yourself rock solid against that, um, you could probably set up Python instead to use uh, ports and actually have the Python script listening for the uh, request from your HTML. Um, for my application requirements here, this was perfectly fine. If we lost a data point, it really wasn't in the world. We're not expecting to use this um, for actual data analysis. This was just for viewing and interacting. Once we have that data though, the first thing we do for every one of our charts in sequence is we actually push a new record into our data and we just put the date, current date, of the browser itself. So that's just that date function built into the JavaScript. Then into the data set, we put the new data, which we grab from our key value pair for XA. Every single one of these charts is the same, but just for its own key value pair from that data object. Finally, we check if we have all 200 elements actually displaying in our charts. If we have, we then shift out the oldest data, so we get that nice scrolling data effect. If not, we just increment the count until we do after so many 200 calls. And as a final step, we update that chart. Now it's worth noting that these actual chart objects won't have been drawn until they get that first update. So even though they're actually here, these are actually just assigning the variables themselves and what their parameters are, they won't actually have been drawn 
until this update function is called. Finally, after finishing the add data routine, we drop out, we set a timeout to call update data again. And in this case, it happens every 20 milliseconds. And then ultimately, we end up with this. I would highly recommend it for real time viewing of data. Um, if you're working on something on time scale of hours, um, I would start to ask questions. So, this will get you started. Thanks.